everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Lampworking 101.65. You know, anytime you want to really learn to master a technique, you have to be really repetitive. So I am continuing my little journey of implosion techniques. Some people call it a compression bead. Depending on where you live in the world, you'll know it as compression or implosion. Either way, the technique is exactly the same. This week, we are getting a little bit more uh, into a different pattern. Instead of using dots, we'll use lines and see uh, how that looks. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this demonstration. And I hope you're all doing safe and well, and we'll see you next time in the dungeon. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start this demonstration out by showing you how I pull the two color stringer that I'm going to use on these, um, these beads. So I have a coral red and a pea green. And you can build up your double color cane any way you'd like. But what I am going to do today is just gently heat up the coral and um, until the color changes a bit and gets a little darker and then I will add some of the pea green to the other side making sure I get enough to um, to even out the colors I'm just going to punty up with a small thin mandrel on one end and I want to make sure that that mandrel is right in between the two colors and now that we have both of our colors on here, I'm just going to very gently just marver it out a little bit to make it just a little longer. And then I will punty up with a small um, mandrel on the other side. And I'm gonna heat that all up and gently start to pull it out. And we'll make this nice, make it as long as we can and I want to make plenty of these because you don't want to run out of <laughs> stringer when you're right in the middle of your bead or making your pattern. So you see I have a whole bunch of different double color stringers here uh, in various colors to play with today. I also have two sizes of clear. I'm going to use the thinner clear for the base and the thicker clear for the rest of um, my discs when I build them up. Okay, let's go ahead and start. I have my thinner rod of clear and I'm just going to heat it up until I have enough to wrap on my mandrel. So I have just a really simple little base bead. And on top of that, because I want the color in the bead to go all the way up to the top, I'm gonna add some dots on this very first little bead here. So I have like six dots and I hope you notice that they are slightly on the left side of my bead. They're not in the center, they're on the side. And then I'm going to just start to add my clear on top of that. And I, I know where to add the color dots because Basically, <laughs> I want the color dots to be on the side where things are gonna be compressed. And because I know that, I will be turning the mandrel around as soon as I'm done making the disc and that back side will be where I add the pattern. But before I do that, I want to just gently press down this first disc to even things up. And then I will continue to build out the disc and I'm gonna to try to make this disc as big as I possibly can this time. If I need to, what I will do is just add the glass where, where I, I have to, where it's lacking. Um, I can only get so um, big around. So I'm gonna just add my clear where I need to. And there is our disc. I might add a little bit more here. It just kind of depends on how, yeah, I just want the disc to be a little bit more even. 
So I'll add the glass just where I need it to be. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. <laughs> so here's our final disc, and I will start to heat this up very gently and just kind of flatten it out, not really flatten it out, but round it out, use, uh, even it out. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. And you see all of the, um, those little bumps from each one of the discs. That uh, actually comes in pretty handy for this technique. So I'm gonna start adding um, the stringer from the very center to the outside. And I'll just continue this pattern until the disc is completely full of these lines. And in between adding a few lines here and a few lines there, you want to make sure that you heat the whole disc. Make sure the back is warm and the front is warm because if anything, um, the disc right now is under stress because you're heating it and it's cooling and you're adding your color. So um, if the disc is going to break, this um, is when it's going to happen, is when you're working on your pattern. So I'd like to add a few lines, a little bit more of my pattern, and then gently heat the disc up to ensure that it doesn't break on me uh, in the process here. All right, I got a couple more to go. When it starts getting full, I don't necessarily have to start in the very center. All right, so now that I have my pattern on here, what I want to do is to start to melt the pattern in and push the colored glass more into the clear. And here is our final disc. I will show you the other ones that I have done as well. This one is um, different shades of yellow and pink. And this one is the same with some blue added, some different shades of blue. Okay, let's get into heating this up. I'm gonna be using some arrows to show you where I'm heating things up, because it might help, I don't know. But at this point, I'm just trying to heat everything up and melt it in. Okay, now that I have been pushing in that color and trying to melt it down, I'm gonna start my compression. And you will notice that when I start this, my torch is basically going to be on the very edge of the bead, trying to get um, the, just the edge to start to pull in a little bit. And then I also have um, some heat going into the center as well and it will start to form that little cup. And as I heat, I have noticed that I kind of go at this point from the edge to the center and then beyond the center. So if you follow the arrows, I work the edge and then I work the center underneath this little cup that's forming. And when the cup becomes a little bit too much, I will go ahead and press it down slightly to keep it flat on that one side. Okay, now um, I'm heating more of the center of this bead where the mandrel is. All of my heat is focused in the middle. The mandrel is gonna get super hot, so don't let that uh, freak you out. And at this point, everything that I'm doing is basically heating in one spot right in the center and all that glass will flow right down into the center. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get to the next one here. I'm just going to let this cool down. Everything at the very end collapses at once. This bee looks so cool, you guys. And I do want to let you know that having those little ridges from my wraps has helped the pattern become even more interesting with these little tiny scalloped lines that you'll see at the end. It's so cool. 
Okay, here it is again. I'm just heating the edge and then I will slowly start to heat the center in the middle, okay? Flatten it down and then get back to the edge and then move a little bit more into the center. The disc will start to get really um, soupy and floppy. So, you know, it's really about gravity and where your heat is. So right now I'm heating more in the center of the bead and then I go beyond the center to the edge of the under cup. And that right there is like the sweet spot that will allow everything to pull into itself because remember, the glass wants to go where it is hottest. So the hottest spot could be on the edge and then gently traveling to the center to pull that glass and make it go all the way into the center of the bead. And just finish heating everything down and just maintaining a nice round bead here at the end. Try not to worry too much about trapping an air bubble in there. If you do, it's okay, just make another one. You'll, you'll, you'll work it out. Okay, now the last one is just really fast. Just showing you that I'm going from the edge to the center and then to the edge to the center and just maintaining the heat right in the middle. Um, anyway, you guys, I hope this helps out. I hope you like this and give it a try. If you need any help, let me know and we'll see you next time in the dungeon.